This is only for entertainment and educational purposes. Welcome back everyone. Today I'm going to be talking about my net worth calculator. So I wanted a really quick show. This is the directory that I have my uh, Python script in. This is going to be written in Python, FYI. Uh, and then I have a sample input, .json, which I'm going to show you in just a second. And this is just another JSON file that I have uh, that I was working with. So just to show, this is what it will look like wherever you uh, download or, or uh, place the two files. Then we can take a look at the JSON file. So this is the sample input file. It's going to be an object that has accounts, and accounts will just be a list of different accounts. So you can see here, this is one account. It has a bank name, a type, and a balance. Um, you could add an empty securities list here as well. You don't need to because unless it has the type of investment, it won't be looking for securities. So it will not cause an error to not have that there. It won't cause an error though if you do have it either. So let's say I have a one dog bank. Um, and it could be bank name or institution name, whatever, just, just a name. Uh, and the type is going to be a checking account and I have $100 in there. The next one is uh, same bank, but it's going to be my savings account. And let's say I have $200. Obviously, these are just for uh, uh, example purposes, so this is not anything real. And then let's say I open up, or I have my uh, a, a holdings company that has investments. I'm going to call it an investment account. It doesn't really matter. There's many different types of accounts out there under investment, but we'll just call it an investment for this uh, exercise. And then I can have a list of my securities. And so there, so an object that will of an object security a security object will have a ticker of shares search and price so ticker pretty simple just the, what the ticker symbol is going to be so this happens to be apple i'm not condoning apple i just had to pick one stock that would actually pop up when we do the web scraping um and we're going to say i have 10 shares and that i have the search true what this means is that when i run the program this will actually search for the for this ticker uh, on Yahoo Finance and therefore I don't need to have a price here because it's going to figure it out for me that's kind of the whole point of what this net worth calculator will do is it's going to give you your most up-to-date uh, net worth without having to go in and add them all up individually it'll if you just put it in here it'll it'll update update it for you and then I created my own FD. I'm not even sure if that's a real ticker or not. We're going to call it the FinDog stock at this point, which again, does not exist. We'll say I have a thousand shares of it, and I don't want to search it because I know that this is like private equity or whatever, whatever kind of security that it is. And I'm going to say it's worth $10.15 per or 52 cents a share. Um, so yes, I mean, I could do that calculate to myself, but now the, now the program will be able to do it. And then my last account will be what I call my wallet. So, you know, you're, you're walking around money. So it's gonna be of type cash and it has a balance of $20. Now that we have all of that, we're in the net worth calculator. So we're just going to type Python and we're going to have net worth calculator.py. And then the only parameter it's going to take is then where your input file, uh, where the name of your input file. So this mine's going to be sample input.json. So I run that and it'll instantly show me each of the accounts. And then it, it automatically goes to Yahoo, um, Yahoo Finance, says that it's being controlled by an automated test software. It's going to scrape the name and the price. We see that it did, it multiplied it by 10. It automatically did our other security. We have the investment here, our wallet, and their total net worth. So if this were true, I'd be worth $12,561.70. Now let's say that we wanted to change this. It's as simple as that. We can go back here. 
we can run it again. And the cool thing is, is if you have multiple accounts, multiple investment accounts with the same ticker, for instance, say a retirement account and an individual investing, and they all have, say, Apple, it will keep Apple, so we'll have to scrape that price again. It will automatically know what it is. So what this is going to then do is it's going to create two files. It's going to create one file that's going to have all of this uh, verbose information. And if a directory for the current month does not exist, it'll create it. If it's already been created, it just tells you, hey, the directory was already created. Not a problem. We're going to add another file with a timestamp on it, and we're good to go. It also creates an account log file. So we'll actually omit adding this to the file, and it'll just give your top level um, down here, which is um, that holding investment account of the $27,737. So if we go here, we now have a folder called January 2022. So it checked if I had it, it didn't, it, since it didn't have it, it created it the first time, and then the second time, it just added to it. So my first file right here, it creates a CSV file. It gives me the date, oops. Sorry, it gives me the, the time of day. So 17th hour happens to be 5th minute, 25th second. And then it's January 9th, 2022, and it's a net worth statement. So that's what I've named it. Um, it then just shows you everything that you need to know. Basically everything that was in the, in the uh, terminal window. We can go to the second one. We changed it then to 100 shares. It updated. And therefore, everything else was updated. And then there's this accounts log. So every time it will add the header and all of the uh, the account totals for so the time, the date, and then all the account to account totals. So it, it foregoes adding the verbose securities information, and then also adds what time, what kind of type of account it was. The reason I have it add the headers every time is because if you were to add or subtract a an, an account within the middle of a month or within the middle of the year, mainly in the middle of the month, obviously, for this file, because the new one will be created each month, that your columns won't get messed up. So if it happens that the whole month that they all say the same, then you don't have to worry about it. You can just go through and delete all of the, every other one, and everything will be in order. Let's say I added an account. In fact, we can just do that real quick together. So let's close this. So let's say I open up another account. Let's say it's just another savings account and we have $2,000 in this one. It shows up here. We do the quick scraping. There we go. We already had that one. Here we go. Here's the latest one. It gets it shows up here. Everything looks good. And then for the account logs, now what we can see is that there will be a mismatching. So these are no longer in the same column. So you could either adjust these, push them over, however you wanted to handle that, but now you know exactly which column is which for each row. So that's how I felt that it was, it was necessary to do that. Um, I noticed myself I had opened or closed accounts throughout the month, and so it was important to do that. So to look at the code, 
This is Python. So you have to start it out letting it know that it's actually a Python program. This is all the Selenium stuff that has to do, uh, libraries that have to do with web scraping. So you're going you're gonna to have to install WebDriver and let it know uh, where the Chrome driver is going to be at. You can just say, uh, you should download it and um, there's some instructions online about that. We have our OS, our system, math, date, time, and JSON. So the first thing I do is I grab the time and I set it into now. We have a ticker dictionary, which I just keep uh, start as empty, and total net worth, which is going to be starting at zero. This is actually going to be the directory name. So it's going to be the, the month and the year. That's what that's going to be. Then we have the header row and the data row. So we started, uh, started out with the time and the date, which we know is going to be constant every time. And therefore, we, we grab the time and the date. We start that out. This is what's going to get appended to so that we can add that to the account log account total log file that I was just talking about. We then try to make the file or the uh, sorry the directory. Um, and if it errors out, then it's just already been created. That's why I showed that there. If it hasn't been created, then it creates it for us. I'm going to skip down real quick because these are all of our functions. So it actually will jump here first. It opens the file that we gave it, which is at uh, systems arg value one, which is just an array. Zero is going to be the actual name of the program. Then we're going to have the accounts. We're going to set that to json.load, what the input file is. Daily output file name. So this is what's going to create the, the verbose um, or the, the per day file. This is going to be the directory that we, it was just created. And this will be the actual uh, name of the file. So it'll be the hours, minutes, seconds, month, day, year. And then we append network.csv onto it. Now that we've created that name, we're going to open it and allow us to append to it. Then we're going to add the bank name, account type, bounce, ticker, shares, price value. These are just the headers. Then we add the monthly output file, the monthly output file name. So we're going to open this file. So we're creating, we're actually creating that the, the file with the name. We're going to open it. And now we're going to do the bulk of the work. So we're going to cycle through the accounts and we're grabbing the list um, object, which was named accounts in that JSON file. And we're going to print account row and we're going to pass in the specific account. And we're going to pass in this file that we have already opened now. So this is for the daily one. So we're now going to go to print account row. So for print account row, again, we have our account object and our um, daily output file. And now we set each of these to actually be global variables so that we can access them inside of the method and update them. So if it's checking, if the type is going to be checking, then the total net worth we update to be the whatever the balance is of this object. We print out the bank name, the type, and the balance. We write it the exact same thing to the CSV file for the daily output. And we add the bank name and type with the parentheses in the header row and the balance with the dollar sign in the data row. Basically, the same thing happens with all of them. So same thing here. The reason I have these separate is because you could have maybe interest rates down the road. You could do some different things. I wanted it to be separate. So there's some, some redundant code. You can make it a little bit cleaner. 
so you don't have as much redundant code. I chose to keep it very separate and understandable at this point. The difference comes here in investment where we need to get the security account value. So we're gonna call sec get security account value. We're gonna pass in the list of securities and the, out the daily output file. So if we hop down here, we have our security list object, daily output file, total account value we have set as zero, and that's what we're gonna, we're gonna return whatever gets added to here. We cycle through the list. If the ticker is not in our ticker dictionary and we have the search set to be true, then we're gonna search for the price. We'll come, we'll, we'll do that in a second. So if it's, if search is true, meaning that it was, it is in the, search, the ticker dictionary, but we still want it to be searched. So we're not gonna be looking at a given price. Then we want to look up the, uh, in the ticker dictionary that specific ticker because we've already grabbed it. So we don't need, this is what I was talking about before. We don't need to re-scrub uh, the site to get it because it takes it takes a little bit of time to do that. And if you've got a lot of securities, that can compound the time. So we go and we grab it from the dictionary, basically just like a map type thing. Multiply it by the number of shares. We round it to the two decimal places. So we actually have like a price format. That becomes our security value. We print that. So we have the ticker, the shares, whatever the price was that we found. And then we, uh, and the security value. And then we also add that. We give it um, a few columns. So it pushes it out a little bit. And we write then the ticker, the shares. You can also add the name. Uh, we actually do grab the name down here. It's just not quite used. Um, just chose not to because it added a lot of space to it, but you definitely can do that. And we show the ticker amount and security value. Again, it's a little duplication because we're printing and then we're also uh, adding to the, the file. If none of that is true, then we go here and we just take the shares and the price, multiply by, by multiply it by each other, round it to two, and then get printed out. Total account value. We add the security value to that. This is again happening every time. So we add the security um, value to it. Plus equals means that it's going to add it to whatever already is existing. And then we return the total account value. We get the security account value here. Net worth is then increased by the total security account value. We print it out, just like we did up here. We also write it to the daily file. We update the header row and the data row for the account log file. For cash, basically the same thing as the first two, checking and savings. We add that balance to the net worth. We print it out. We uh, write it to the daily output file the header row, the data row. That gets us done with all of this. Now let's real quick talk about the search for price. So all search for price does, is all it needs is a ticker. It's then going to look up the driver summary. And what I mean by summary is on the Yahoo Finance page, there's a few different tabs. Summary is the one that we need, that gives us the information we need. So we do web driver. Uh, dot Chrome, it's going to open it up. Uh, so actually, this is uh, webdriver.get, then this is going to be the website. So we want to get the quote, add the ticker. So in this place, AAPL. Uh, it needs it in both spots for the URL. And then opens it up. It's going to try then to set the name to driver summary dot find element by X path. And then you can then enter what the X path is going to be. And then also just have it replace any commas uh, with nothing. So it just removes them. If it does not find that it's then the name will be error. It will print that to the console. Uh, not a big deal about the name. Uh, then it then grabs the price, 
again, this is the driver summary, find, by el find element by xpath. This is the URL. Pull out any commas. If no such element exists for this one, then we allow the price to be inputted by the user. So enter price for ticker. Now at this point, this still should be open. So let's say the site's down, something's happening, maybe they changed where they're placing it on the website. You should be able to be able to look at what it says on the website, type it in, and it'll enter it in for you. It'll just say that there was a, an error, not a big deal. It adds that there. So no matter what, you should, you should still get a price. Just know if you're doing that, it hits this, it's gonna wait for you to add that in input. We then quit it, so it's gonna close down that site. The ticker dictionary, um, we're gonna add that ticker value, the, the, so the ticker symbol, and give it the price. That gets that whole map idea. And then that's where it can be searched later. So we've cycled through all the accounts. They've all been added. Our monthly output file name, we close it up by adding the total net worth as a header with a new line. Monthly output file name, we write the data row. All right, so now that we've cycled through all of the different accounts, we just need to close things out. So our monthly output file name, we're gonna write the header of net worth, total net worth, give it a new line. For a month, uh, we're also then going to write the accounts log data row. We're gonna give it the total net worth, give it a new line. We then wanna print out the net worth to the console. And then for the daily output file, we're going to add the net worth, give it uh, a few columns, and give it the total net worth, a few more columns, and a new line. And then we close that out. We close out the monthly output file name. We close the JSON file input, input file, and then we are good to go. Make sure you want, you really do want to close out all of your files before you're uh, done with everything. So that is what it takes to do your net worth calculator. Enjoy.